Anyway, I was filming a master's class. Yogi Ma and Edgar Meyer and someone else were, were presenting um, master classes. And I walked in where Edgar Meyer was playing. He was playing the double bass. And there was a student um, playing Charlie Mingus transcriptions on the double bass. Way up, ding, 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 ding. Um, uh, right, right by the, the bridge. And Charlie Meyer was, um, Edgar Meyer was very polite about it. He said, you know, that's a very unusual thing. I've never seen anyone do that before. And it's, um, you know, I have to think about it. But, you know, I've always thought of the natural voice of the instrument. Which, as far as I can tell, now, Russell, you'll have to, if, if I'm right, but I think in Beethoven's Choral Symphony, the Ode to Joy theme comes in on the double bass. Is that right? Right. And, you know, it just, it, it's one of the great moments, you know, this comes out of seemingly nowhere and it's, that's the natural voice of the instrument, right? And this is true for, for dancers and stuff. Oh, can I just editorialize them? Dancers here, it's all about sex or death. Go for the sex. It's the natural <laughs> voice of the instrument. <laughs> individual, ca individual instruments, cameras, bodies, voices, they have natural, a natural voice. There's things that they do really well. You can do almost anything with any instrument, but it means you're pushing the envelope you, and you, you strain it. And if you want, and for some aesthetic reasons, you might want to strain it. And there might be really good reasons to. But you do it at risk and you do it deliberately. Otherwise, go with the natural voice. You know, I'm really lucky. I lived in a time when I started by making film, working, shooting and editing film, um, you know, the, the real stuff, you know, photochemical. And I'm really lucky that, and glad that I lived long enough to start the you know, the easy street of digital acquisition and editing. But if there was ever a, a combination where my natural voice and a mechanical one coincided, it was a 16 millimeter Aton camera with a 10 millimeter fast lens and high speed color negative film. This is, we were just, the next shot I want to show is something that was shot with that combination. I made a film that's never been released um, um, called A Place for Jazz. It was about the 1369 Jazz Club in Somerville. And I would show up at about 11 o'clock at night with my gear and the sound guy would get there. And we'd hang around and then the musicians would say, hey, let's do this number. We'd film this number and then we'd talk to the musicians in the basement and stuff. And then we go home. And this went on for about four years before they even started editing the film. And I'm not a dancer. I know you saw me do a little soldier boy, and so you think I am, but um, it's, it's not the natural voice of this instrument. <laughs> and in the jazz club, there was an itty bitty stage, and it had multiple mic stands, and tables, and drum kits, and music stand all over. So, I would have to get, looking through the viewfinder, I would have to, this little Tai Chi helps, I put the weight on one foot, and then, I said, oh, wait, no, no, I'm not going to shift the weight. Oh, my Is there a mic stand? You know, for like 12 minutes, that the length of a whole magazine. And if I blew it, there was nothing to cut to. So, anyway, I want to show the shot that, that when the Massachusetts Arts Commission saw it, they immediately gave us a grant. Unfortunately, the state ran out of money the next week, and the grant was never funded.
sometimes the circumstances that you were involved in really is not so important, but what, what was the reason for being here? I mean, we came to perform music. We had people here who, who paid money and who, who came to hear music. I was influenced by the audience, you know, because I, I heard people listening. You could feel a holistic feeling in here tonight. Th these people seem to share the type of respect for each other. There was no confusion up in this place tonight. There was no confusion. I mean, it, uh, people's attention was up there, you know. It's a club. See, the one thing, too, about clubs is sometimes people misunderstand. A club is a social place. Clubs are social gathering. You understand? The noise and everything goes with it. And it's a proving ground for musicians. I don't really want nobody to tell the audience to be quiet. If I can't make the audience be quiet, they need to talk over me, because I ain't doing shit. Uh, that is absolutely brilliant statement, you know. If, if you're, they're talking, then I'm not doing shit, and they ought to be talking. That's the way I teach. That's why it's so off the wall. You know, I hate people going to my space, you know, which they do. <laughs> In Facebook, I know. <laughs> but that's just because I ain't doing shit. I've had some really great experiences in WAC, including the few dance media fellowships. And um, Aiko, the Buto dancer of the team Aiko and Koma, she, was, she frequently talked very philosophically and with great wisdom. And she told at one point about a piece that they were doing in a glass trailer. And they would take this glass trailer to shopping malls and the assistant would come and open the sides, and they'd be all like this, inside, inside the, the enclosure, and over the space of three hours, they would slowly transform into other, other things. And, you know, and like Henry, what Henry Threadgill was saying, that, did I, maybe I forgot to mention what he said that isn't on the tape. He said that he puts his music out because he's hearing it inside. He wants to put the music out and hear it back. And the audience is really just feeding in on the loop. But it's the validation and the, oh, whatever he's doing. Um, and clearly in, in the Bhutto performance, the meditative, meditative aspect is, is an important part of it. It's the going through the process. It's not a spectator sport necessarily. She said that in this performance, some people would come and they'd watch rapidly for three hours. And other people would walk by once and, and say, hey, go for it, dude, dude. And maybe they'd finish their shot and they'd walk by, go, dude. Um, and other people would watch five or 10 minutes and some people would come and watch for a few minutes and fall asleep. She said, it's all good. We're going to do the performance, and every single person that sees it is getting what they need out of it. And I found great comfort in that.